Number 57. Iodine that enters the body is stored in the thyroid gland from which it is released to control growth and metabolism. The thyroid can be imaged if iodine-131 is injected into the body. In larger doses, I-133 is also used as a means of tracing cancer of the thyroid. And iodine-131 has a half-life of 8.70 days and decays by beta emission. Letter A. Write an equation for this decay. Okay. So it seems here that the only thing that they told us was that the iodine-131 decays by beta emission. So that's the balanced equation that we have to write. Now, we're dealing with uh, isotopes here. We're dealing with a nuclear reaction, right? I only got one um, element here, just the iodine. And we're emitting off a beta particle. So we have to use our nucleide notation. So maybe what I'll do is I'll say letter A over here. And just keep in mind that when we do use our nucleide notation uh, for balanced equations, we need those three separate things. We need a element symbol, mass number, and atomic number. I like to put them in little cute boxes like this. How cute. So let's just write out the framework, right? It says that the iodine-131 is going to decay by beta emission. So I know that I'm going to have I, iodine-131, and this is going to decay by beta emission. Now just know that any time that you're talking about emission, right, you are emitting something into the atmosphere. So your particle, whatever you are emitting into the atmosphere, that's always going to be on the product side. So pee pee, <laughs> pee pee. <laughs> Particles, so whatever particle it is, is on the product side. So that's where the P, P comes in. So in this case, it's a beta, right? B, uh, that is a B. It's like a Greek B. With the minus, that's the beta, so not, not positron. So we got a beta particle, and it's being emitted, and we know that it's going to be on the product side, so I'm just going to put another one over here. And let's just say that this is a beta particle. Okay. So we got the two things going on here. Um, let's just see if we can get it balanced. If not, we'll just add some other uh, nucleide, right? So iodine-131, the symbol for iodine is I. It's right there. And 131, they have to tell us the mass number, right? The number is always at the end is always going to be the mass number, and maybe we'll do that in blue. This is the mass number, because a mass can change for a given isotope, right? Because you can have different number of neutrons. So different number of neutrons, different mass. And the mass numbers always go on the top of your nuclei notation. So 131 is going up on the top. The bottom number, right, this yellow, that's saved for your atomic number. Now, they didn't tell me any atomic numbers here because the atomic number doesn't change for a given atom. That's its own special and unique number. It's the number of protons. So iodine will always have the same uh, number of protons, the same atomic number, no matter whether this is 131, 132, 133, whatever. So we got to go on the periodic table and find out what um, iodine's Atomic number is, it's the big, beautiful whole number. It's not the decimal. That's the average mass. So this one is 53. Let me just write that a little bit better. 53. Okay. That's, eh, that's not up to 53. Okay, beautiful. Now let's come over to the beta particle. Now a beta particle is the same thing as saying an electron. So you can put a beta here, or you could put an E for an electron. Doesn't matter to me. When I like to get fancy, I'll get fancy, right? I'll put that B there. Beautiful. And now we just got to figure out what are the numbers for an electron or a beta particle. The charge of a beta particle, just like an electron, is always a negative one. So that's the number that goes down here. But electrons are not in the nucleus, so it has no atomic mass. So we're going to simplify this by just saying zero. But now, if this is a balanced equation, 
the left side masses have to equal the right side. We could use this yield sign as an equal sign. But 131 does not equal zero, which means that we need some other element that this iodine is going to change into. So let's add one more and see if we can find out who that element is. So 131 equals zero plus what? What number does that have to be? Yeah, 131, right? Okay, so we know the top is 131. And then let's see, 53 equals a negative one plus what? Well, seems like we're subtracting, so I have to be one more number up. And if you need to, you know, you could always label it X and then say 53 equals negative one plus X and then use your algebra as well. So you're just going to add one on over to the other side. So this will be 54 and 54 minus one is a 53. But now the question is, who is this atom? Well, you're absolutely correct. The atomic number will tell you who it is, right? So I got to look on the periodic table to find out who's 50, 54. And that's xenon. So X, E. And now letter A is all balanced. So that's all beautiful. Now let's move on to letter B. Letter B says, how long will it take for 95% of a dose of I-131 to decay? All right. So how long, right? How long does it take to run a mile, right? How long does this movie last? Anytime that you're asking how long something is, they're always looking for some type of time value. So I know that my variable that I'm looking for is lowercase t, a general time. Now, the question is, is what formulas are we using? Well, I'll give you a little hint. They're the ones that are on the bottom, but how did we get there? Just know that all nuclear reactions, so I don't care if you're talking about an isotope of iodine like we have here. Maybe it's carbon-14 or uranium, right? It doesn't matter if you have just an atom, right, or an, a single element and it's a nuclear reaction. This is always going to abide by first-order kinetics. No exceptions. So if you are in nuclear chemistry, chances are you've already done your kinetics chapter. And you've already done first order kinetics, right? There are two formulas for first order kinetics in that kinetics chapter. Now, because this is generally a new chapter, a lot of teachers or professors want you to memorize new formulas, but I don't think that that's necessary. These are the formulas that you know, so why can't we just use them? So that's why I just like to use the same ones that they've been giving to you for the kinetics chapter. So from that, we know that we have two formulas and the only one that has a general time value is this one. So I know at the end of the day, we have to use this guy. And we're trying to solve for T. So we're gonna label that as X. Now let's talk about these values, right? These are your quantities, these A values. Now one has just an A, the other one has an A zero. The zero means that no time has gone by. So this is your initial amount. And then the other one has to be your final amount. So did I say final remount? <laughs> final amount. Okay, there we go. So let's start with the initial. Now they did tell us how long will it take for 95% to decay? Well, if we're talking about percentages, what's always the initial amount, right? The highest percentage possible. Yeah, you got it, it's 100%. So we know that this guy is gonna be 100. Now, when you come over here though, and when you're talking about your final amounts, it's always the final amount that is remaining because you want to just find out how much of the same isotope you have left, right? I don't care about how much has changed over into another isotope. In this case, I don't care about how much has lost to xenon. If you're talking about iodine, you got to talk about iodine at the end. So if we started off with 100% of iodine, and they said that 95 of the percent has decayed, 
that means that 95% of the iodine has poof, has gone away, converted into the xenon. That's not how much is remaining. How would I find out how much is actually remaining if 95% of it got lost? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. We would take the 100% and we would subtract from the 95. And now we know that only 5% is remaining and that's the number that we're gonna use. Now, the last piece of the puzzle for this, right, the LNs, natural logs, are just functions on the calci, but we want to find out what the rate constant is. That's what the K value is, but if I look this over again, eh, they didn't give me any rate constant values. But that's why there's the other formula. The other formula is the missing link to find out the rate constant and plug it into the formula that we need. The only thing is in order for this to work, we have to find out a half-life. That's what this T half is called. Now, did they tell us a half-life? Yes, they did. They said that iodine-131 had a half-life of 8.7 days. So that's what we're going to have to do first. So let's go for it. They told us that the half-life was 8.70 days. That's a long time. That means that in 8.7 days, 50% of the iodine will decompose. And we're just going to solve for the K value. So 8.70 equals 0 0.693 is just the standard ln of 2. So that's always a standard value. We'll put the K on the bottom. I'll just show you that we're cross multiplying. And then we will divide. So at this stage of the game, we have 8.70 times K equals 0 0.693. Let's divide by 8.70 on both sides. This cancels out. And maybe I'll move this up a little bit. Whoop just so that I get that K value on the bottom. So K equals 0 0.693 divided by 8.7. And we get 0 0.079655. Now just know that if your half-life is in days, your rate constant is gonna be per day. So days to the minus one. And now we have that value that we can now use for the other formula. So let's go for it. LN, I'm just gonna write out the framework here. So this times this plus LN of this. So we have LN of five, you don't have to put the percent, LN of five equals negative 0 0.079655 times the time, which is the x value, plus ln of 100. So let's do these two first. Let's do ln of 5 and ln of 100. So ln of 5 is, okay. So we got 1.609 1. I guess, equals negative 0 0.079655 times the x value. And now let's do ln of 100, not ln of 1,000. There we go. And then that's plus 4.6. 0517. I'll use the whole numbers uh, when I do the um, the subtraction and whatnot. So I'm going to minus that value from the other one. Minus 4.60517. <laughs> and that goes there. So let me pull up these values. This minus this. There we go. So I get negative 2.9957 equals a negative 
zero point zero seven nine six five five times by the x value. We want to solve for the x, so we will divide on both sides by the negative zero point zero seven nine six five five. And I'll pull up the whole value again. Cross that off. And we get this divided by negative. Let's go find that value. That's this guy. Enter. And that's it. So x, which is the time. And maybe I could bring this over a little bit. Here we go. x equals. 37.6. Um, and what unit was this in? Half-Life was in days, so this is going to be in days as well. So 37.6 days. So after more than a month, right? More than 31 days, 37 days, um, you're going to still have iodine in your body. You're going to have 5% left, but that's still, that's still some percentage. So there you go. Hopefully it's helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, I love helping you guys out. Thank you so much for coming here to get chemistry help. We also have physics and math videos on the channel as well at the moment with more subjects in the future. We're so excited for what this channel, you know, hopefully has the potential to morph into. And it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much for watching the videos, for subscribing to the channel, for telling your friends, tell your classmates about it. Um, you guys really rock and you're the real MVPs. So thank you so much. Um, let's just keep rocking and rolling. Keep studying hard. And I look forward to helping you in future questions. Okay. Bye-bye.